Welcome to the Unity Guys Expert Interview Series. My name is Clayton Stinson. I'll be your host today. This series is brought to you by Unity Guys Incorporated, where we help develop unity within companies running on entre the entrepreneurial operating system. We do this through fractional integrator services and relationship coaching for the visionary and integrator. And the reason I started this interview series is that I've met some pretty amazing people in recent years, and the conversations we've had have been awesome and valuable to me. So I thought I should share them with other people to add value to them as well. And today's awesome person, guest that we're going to have on the show is Rick Benton. Rick is an EOS implementer in Arizona. So welcome, Rick. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Awesome. And today we're going to talk about facilitation, um, which is a, a, a topic that uh, is near and dear to my heart and that I've really had to learn and grow in in the last few years since I've been an integrator. So Rick, why did you want to talk about this topic? Why is it important to you? I came from the events industry. I spent 30 years, started a DJ company in high school and built it up through an audiovisual event planning company. And to me, facilitation was so, so interesting because when I started with my first couple sessions, I was so nervous. I was so nervous that here's, here's our guides and our schedule and our agenda. And what I didn't realize until we got into it is that the impact of the phrase, we are objective driven, not agenda driven. We can't, I came from something that was so agenda driven. We, here's our timeline. We are so precise. We have to be at 701. The, the introduction happens at 703. The CEO comes out. He gives remarks for 20 minutes and, and then we have the video and whatever it might be. Dinner is at 745 and everything was so precise. And I was preparing for that first focus day. And going through and saying, okay, we're going to do this at this time, two and a half hours for this, 45 minutes for that. And then it just free flowed. And it just happened. And it was magical in the sense that, wait a minute, my job is not to drive an agenda, to drive a timeline anymore. My job was really just to bring forth the answers that are already here in the room. And if we need to spend more time on something, okay, that's good. And if we need to spend less time over here, that works. And, and if we don't get to the end of the day as intended, that's okay too. And the more and more I dove into this, the more I hear other, other implementers tell stories about how, wow, we walked into the session room, we had an agenda, but the objectives of the day were something totally different. And we threw out that agenda and we focused in on that. And to me, it's absolutely fascinating. It keeps things just exciting and different and and impactful to what yeah. is needed for the day. Yeah, that's interesting. And I'll, I just want to comment as an integrator and a, like a detail oriented person. Part of me is is twitching a little bit. Like we've got to stay on track, right? <laughs> yeah. agenda, right? But but. <laughs> The experience part of me is like, you know what? Yes, the agenda is important and there's things we're trying to accomplish. But yeah, sometimes I experience it too in L10 meetings where there's like an elephant in the room or there's something, you know, that really needs the whole day <laughs> or the whole 90 minutes. I mean, to, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you throw out the agenda and it's like, okay, this is the most important thing. And, you know, it's, you don't do that every week, but. Um, but yeah, sometimes there's, there's stuff like that, that, you know, if you get to, yeah, if you, if you get into that meeting, you might have 15 things on your issues list, but you know what? Issue number one is going to take 58 of those 60 mm -hmm. minutes allocated. And that's the most important thing that you have to solve. And if you solve it, if you move to a solve and you get, get it to do out of it, that's going to make the problem go away. That is the most important thing that you can do this week. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, we were, I had a vision building day one, and our objective is to get through the, our agenda is to get through the 10 year target. But I introduced it knowing now from experience that, you know, we might just get through core focus, core pressure testing their existing core values and 
then shifting from the brain to the heart to really get into why you do what you do with your core focus, those, those are long, drawn out processes that are exhausting. And, you know, we got to the end, of, we got to five o'clock, even a little past. And do you want to, tar- do you want to jump into a uh, 10 year target? No, we're exhausted. We're done. Okay. We'll move it to next time. But the process of digging out their core values, of discovering those core values was so rewarding. It was so intense and so rewarding because they came in with a list. I mean, it's one of my favorite things. Companies always come in with a list. Oh, here's our core values. And generally, they're they're pretty generic. Yeah. Right? Um, they're, they're, you know. Customer the service. Yeah, yeah, customer service, customer <laughs> service, and integrity, and uh, and honesty, and and the basics, you know, almost pay to play ones, and and we went through this process, this long process. We were keep killing, combining. They probably had 40, 50 words that I was drawing drawing maps all over the boards from board to board to board, and at the end of the process, we ended up with four core values, and. And the visionary looked at me and said, well, what about the ones we started with? And I looked at the list that I had written down at the beginning. And I said, I looked at the list that we finished. And one was simple words and one was wow, deep, impactful statements. And I looked at those finished products and I said, I read them off and I said, they're there. They're already, they're embedded in what we just right. figured out, but they are just so much more powerful. And this process you can't script that. Yeah. You can't create that. And the facilitation process is so magical when the answers are in the room. It's and as a quick start, you know, as a five, three, eight, four, it's just so exciting to just go with the flow and see what the day brings. Yeah, that's awesome. But and, but in me as a seven, eight, two, four, <laughs> right? We're we're uh, a bit opposites. But I've learned to love that as well. But I think when I was early in my career, I felt like I, you know, had to follow that agenda, you know, and I had to have the answers. But I like what you said, the answers are in the room. What are your thoughts on that? Like when we switch right now, right now we're talking about EOS um, all day sessions, but in an L10 or in an integrator role, you know, how does that apply? Do you think the answers are in the room and not needing to have all the answers? For me, it was interesting because the process of becoming an integrator, or I'm sorry, an implementer, is of, you know, going through a boot camp, I had no idea what to expect. Coming from those events where we had the timelines and we had the scripts and we were so precise to having a little bit of a break where I explored different careers, had, uh, <laughs> was it teacher <laughs> and teaching is, uh, Teaching is supposed to be so scripted and you never know what the kids are going to come into the room with. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. My, my quick start was love it. My, uh, my principal did not like my three and follow through. How's <laughs> that? I, they have a very strict process and my three, my, my three and, pro- and follow through just meant I wanted to adapt everything, every process. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, you come in, you have, you go through the experience of boot camp, and what you figure out is that the process of learning implementation, of facilitation, of of how to bring this forward to every every, it's done on live. Every session, you're going to learn something new, and that's why there's value in in the more sessions that you do because you're just going to experience new things. You're going to see different teams come together and rally around different concepts and different ideas and different values and be able to facilitate things to where you can strengthen their ability Mm -hmm. in each of those six key components. I I already used the term magical, but it truly is. And it's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. And definitely when I made the calls, I spoke to about 20 different random implementers, both locally and around the, around the country. And they all said the same thing. This was the best decision they ever made. And it's, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I think somebody told me uh, two days ago, they said, EOS implementation is the ultimate life hack. You just, 
it's so rewarding. It's yeah. it's amazing. You bring so much value to people, and yeah. and it's fun. Yeah, I heard you say you know that it's a it's a process and you, and you learn on the fly. So I guess if you for me what what came from that is that if you're a new integrator watching this, and you feel like um, you don't have it all figured out, you know that's a that's okay, right? Like just keep getting yeah. your reps in, right? You you keep keep learning and growing and that's and, the key and uh you know and asking good questions and you know watch videos and do training and you know just keep asking silly I, questions yeah i actually had someone reach out to me uh and book an appointment she, she's like for for this week and she said i'm the integrator and i have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> i don't need to talk to somebody <laughs> And uh, I think, you know, often we feel like that. I remember uh, I wasn't an integrator at the time, but my first like leadership role and I was, you know, I was like that. I felt like I'm, I'm freaking out here. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but over time, I started to recognize that, you know, what I don't have to have all the answers. I have to have good questions. I have to, yeah. you know, guide and inspire and, you know, um, I feel like a, as a, as an integrator, that's especially as a fractional integrator, when I'm coming in from the outside, um, you know, I'm trying to draw out the answers and help people uh, to see what's happening. And uh, usually they have their own ideas on how to fix things. Well, yeah. every time you step into someplace new, I mean, there's that Japanese um, notion of what is a Shoshin, the, the beginner's mind, the, you can't be afraid to not know what you're doing to to i mean bluntly i used to tell people you can't be afraid of sucking at something when you are starting at it because that's the yeah. only that's where you have to start you have to start yeah. with the beginner's mind and be open to this mm -hmm. is a new experience this is a new team this is a new culture and what can i bring that's going to be of value to them to help them achieve their goals mm -hmm. and you're not going to know how to do that on day one no, it's, you you have to go in with an open mind, with and say I'm going to I'm here to learn. Mm -hmm. As a as an implementer, I think that's that's true on every single focus day, every single every single vision building day where you are just really learning your teams. You walk in the second day, and it's kind of like okay, I've checked my notes. Which who's who again, and which who which one's which, and and you just kind of go with the flow, and you remember, oh yeah, okay, I remember this this person's personality here, and oh, this is what they bring to the table, and yeah. oh wait, here's a new person on the leadership team, or somebody who that we had here. Wait, they just, they're just not off the leadership team; they were fired. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, maybe there's a conversation there, but what yeah. happened? Like, what can we learn from that? Uh, yeah. I mean, th they came out of focus day and they realized that, you know, with that accountability chart, an entire division of their team was redundant or just not as productive as they wanted to be. And they, they let not only that, that leader, but his entire team, they said, that's not where we need to go. We're not getting what we want out of it. So, um, wow. And so we, we went from six people in the leadership team to four and they had a great session <laughs> and they, it's a courage. It's, yeah. it's exciting. I think the beauty of an EOS implementer is the objectivity, right? Like you come in, you're a complete outsider, you know, you don't know anything. And while that might like about the company, right? Uh, while that might seem, you know, like a detriment, it's actually not. I've sat in sessions and listened to implementers ask questions and I'm just thinking, dang, that was a good question, <laughs> right? Like I, I smile. I remember work, working with John Fox, who was the first implementer I ever was in a session with, you know, and just really appreciating the, the challenging questions that he asked because he's an outsider, right? Like he doesn't have to worry about, you know, what it's going to be like tomorrow. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Yesterday, my, they came back and they were just saying, look, you know, we were pushing through these core values and really digging deep and we were getting exhausted and you just kept pushing and you yeah. just kept, kept us focused on getting and drilling it down on getting precise and using the right words in our final draft of what we're coming up with. And suddenly it, it just clicked. It was so powerful and they walked out of there so proud. 
of yeah. of just what they're having these tools to not only describe their company, describe who they are and what they stand for and what they believe in. And when you ask them, okay, are you willing to hire to these core values? Are you willing to fire somebody because the, these are the values that you are building a culture around? And when they see, when they go from integrity and honesty and customer service to something that is just impactful and powerful and meaningful that will bleed through the entire company. You have just helped them clarify what their culture is and what, yeah. what they are building and how they're going to build it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. It's fun. And it's, <clears throat> I just think about how you, you come together. Yeah. Like when you, when you dial those four core values or how many in there is and the core focus and all these different pieces, you know, U S talks about rowing in the same, mm-hmm. direction, right. It's, it's a, it's an incredible thing when you go through that hard process. Yeah, it was hard. It was a long day, but then come out of the other end with something amazing. And I looked at that and I didn't even realize when I looked at that, when I looked at those original core values, looked up on the on the whiteboard and saw the four statements that we had, and I realized they're there. And and it, I got chills when I when I when they asked me that question, "What about the originals?" And I looked and I said, but "They're already there. They're they are there. We haven't abandoned these thoughts. We have just dialed them in and made them so crystal clear and yeah. brought clarity." to specifically who you are and what makes you unique and special and yeah. powerful. Yeah. And clarity and unity. Right. Yeah. We all agree. And now you roll it out, you know, and get everybody else on the p- same page. I see that with my client, my current client, uh, they've been implementing for about a year. And I was struck by, as I started to meet the team and you know, mm-hmm. you were like kind of the key players and get to know them a little bit. I was just struck by the core values are just bled right. <laughs> from them. Right. And it, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing process. And I think vision building day one is one of my favorite days out of the entire EOS experience, just because you have those foundational tools that, that you started in the focus day. And now we're starting to make it, okay, we're, who are we and what do we really do? And we had that experience where you start off, well, what do you do? Why do you do it? Well, we're here to make money. You know, this was, you know, and they went through the process. This isn't really about our, uh, it's not about our product. They weren't really passionate about the product. They were passionate about how they made people feel. Mm -hmm. And when you can dial that in and then you can start getting that. And, and we bring up the Simon Sinek video of, um, I do at least the start with why, you know, people, people don't follow you because of what you do. They, they, you know, they buy from you because why you do it. And it's such a powerful statement. And when you come into that core focus, you realize that people are going to work with you, not because of what you do. You know, whatever you do, financial planning, industrial supplies, this was uh, windows and doors. There's a million windows and doors companies out there. Yeah. Why do you do what you do? Right. What's your magic? What's your magic? What What is the passion? How do you make people feel? You know, to quote Maya, Maya Angelou, yeah. that's what people remember. How do you make people feel? Whether it's your clients, whether it's your employees, your team, all your stakeholders. What's the impact of your organization, your effort, your energy? What do you bring towards the world? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in this day and age, um, like people, year, I guess years ago, you, you just get a job and you work there for, for five yeah. years and you collect your paycheck and you were happy. Right. It isn't that way anymore. People want, yeah. to be a, people want to be a part of something, especially I'd say this younger generation, they want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Absolutely. And, uh, so sharpening this stuff and getting super clear on who you are, your core values, your core focus, all of this stuff, it helps you externally, but it helps you internally um, equally. Uh, love it. Um, so maybe just tell us a little bit about 
the process. Like there may be people listening sure. um, who don't know about EOS implementers. I know I self-implemented in my first company that I was integrator in. I didn't even know there was implementers at the time. There's probably <laughs> a lot more awareness of that now, <laughs> but. EOS uh, is doing a great job. I mean, yeah. I, their conference is growing. It's powerful. It's impactful. The, the, the I mean, the library we're going from just traction. I mean, the um, where's uh, this was just released. You probably have seen it. This yeah. one here, let's get the angle yeah. so you get the you know this one right here. Such a powerful message of building an intentional culture, and the tools that we have available yeah. now are just so far reaching. Everything is so dialed in, and what the implementer does, the process is it's kind of like, you know, if you are self implementing. I'm a tennis player. So you can take a tennis racket and you can go out to a court, grab a can of balls, get an uh, inexpensive racket, and you can try to teach yourself how to serve. And you'll come up with a serve and you'll probably, you do it long enough, you'll be able to hit a decent serve and probably you're going to be a little funky in your motion, but that's okay. And you see players who have a really weird motion. You're like, oh, then, or you can hire a coach. And a coach, what a coach is going to be able to do is take the time from beginner to experienced and just shorten it. Yeah. They're going to be able to use their experience or their skills or their education or their tools. We have our, our implementer guides. We have our videos. We have our the books that we study over and over and over again to really dive deeply into them. And we can use that experience and the process that has been dialed in to get you where you want to go faster. And at the end of the day, all we have is time. Time is our most precious commodity. So if you want to go somewhere, you know, as a little kid, we experience it. Are we there yet? <laughs> well, as a business owner, you know, you, whatever your goal might be, are we there yet? Well, how can we get there as soon as possible? Yeah. And the investment, people are scared of the investment for an implementer. It generally can be, you know, anywhere from... 20 to 30 to, you know, probably, you know, over 50 to 60, maybe even more a year to work with an implementer, usually for a couple of years. But how much is that time worth? Mm -hmm. And finding the right implementer for the right session fee that works for your company. How much is that time worth? So working with an implementer is something that um, when you're ready to really get to where you want to go. Yeah. It's just so much faster. And the process is one that's, I will promise it's dialed in. And one of the things that makes you EOS unique is that this guarantee we have. Yeah, our session days may be considered expensive by some, but it's all guaranteed. If you don't get value and if we don't do what we say we're going to do, great, don't pay us. Um, I totally blanked on what I was going to say. <laughs> no worries. The, but, um, but the, the process, process. Yeah. Yeah. So the process that, you know, you start off with fo focus. Okay. Day. Yeah. Is that right? Well, so we, we actually start with what we call 90. Right. Right. The 90 is the, the 90 is just an, it's, it's, it's a free session and it's a designed to say, here's the book traction best explanation i heard this is the movie version it's 90 minutes and we're going to tell you exactly how this model works together what it can mean for you and your company what your company is going to look like if you were 100 percent strong in the key in the six key components of the business and when we encounter when somebody's going to call out to eos or somebody reaches out to an implementer usually they're at a pain point they're at a point where their business is overwhelming they are spinning their wheels faster and faster, and they're just not moving forward. They're not achieving their goal. They've hit the ceiling. They've reached the maximum capacity of what their experience, their resources, their team, their, you know, what, whatever their capacity is, they've reached it and they can't grow beyond it due to some limitation. And they need somebody to help come in from the outside with an outsider's perspective to be able to say, hey, let's shift it. It's time for a revolutionary 
change instead of just continuing to evolution, the evolution. You know, it's you've, you've been doing 2x, 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 and the beauty of Dan Sullivan's book is 10x. Right. You need to completely change your point of view. Yeah. And you need to change the way you've do, do, been doing things so now you can grow to the next level. Yeah. And that 90, that 90 minutes is with the leadership team, correct? Yeah. We come in. I mean, I've met with the individual. And then I meet with the leadership team and then I meet with more. I've done three nineties for the same team just to get them ready yeah. for now a focused day back yeah. up, call it a 90 because it's well, 90 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. we paint the picture of the model. We show you what the six, the six key components, the vision, the people, the data, the issues, the processes, and what it means to actually gain traction towards that vision this is what it looks like. These are the tools we use. And this is how your business is actually going to grow and thrive yeah. immediately. So then in focus day, what do you do? Focus day is a, it's a full day. We say seven hours plus or minus one, but I'm kind of, mine tend to be, maybe it's because I'm not as efficient or we dive deep or I I, we enjoy lunch. I have no idea, but uh, mine tend to be more like seven and a half or eight. Haven't really pushed plus or minus one from eight. I just think, uh, oh no, focus day. Sorry, I was just getting to vision building day one. I'm uh, going after yesterday. Focus days, yeah, seven hours plus or minus one. And the important thing there is, is really these, it's the foundation. We are laying down the foundation so you can have traction. And what does that mean? Traction means that we have tools that we can build upon and we can use to, to start moving forward every single day to gain towards that vision. So what we do is the first thing is we really dive into what it means to hit the ceiling. And what do we have to come back to? What are the what is the mindset? When we hit the, when we recognize we hit the ceiling, what do what can we do about it? And what are five simple tools to say, okay, we're hitting a ceiling. Now what? Well, we need to look at the situation. We need to work to simplify it. We need to work to delegate some of these things that are overwhelming us. Whatever it might be, there's tools that we use. Second thing we do, all right, you guys have hit a ceiling. You guys are here. We are going to build your team, build this accountability chart, not for who you have in the company, not for where you are, but we want to grow. Where do we want to be in 12 months? What is the team and the structure that's going to, that we need in order to get to where we want to go in 12 months? And that's, that's hard. Yeah. There's some real hard situations in there. I mentioned we had a focus day with six people on the leadership team. We came into the next day, the next 30 days later, we had four. Yeah. If you ever question an EOS implementer's value, when I first saw this and I said, oh my gosh, you know, they just pointed out a huge issue is that you have a redundancy of two staff members on your leadership team, two salaries. That are redundant. I mean, that's gonna, that's going to cover our cost in one meeting. <laughs> I'm I'm so curious to know how that conversation went with They're those two in the room <laughs> because they go home and they realize that they have built their team for who they have, not what they need. So we're doubling up. Yeah. Because well, these two people, they're you know we like them and they're part of our team, but you know what? doesn't make sense it doesn't you know, and i Sometimes think that, that, that objective perspective asking questions i had another one there's, whole, there's one. no hanging fruit you know like yeah. there's no hanging fruit there's things that are obvious to the outsider that aren't to the insider i had one a couple months ago they had this they had an employee who a new employee who they were going to send off overseas for training on specific specific model and uh, of whatever the technical equipment was. Training was going to cost them 50 grand. That's a huge investment in somebody. Yeah. And it was early in the year and they weren't going to make their money back on that training till November. So, but until that training session was starting, 
probably sometime March, April, whenever it was, we were in this situation where they were realizing that this employee, uh, he didn't have much to do. He was kind of loafing around the air, the, the, the warehouse and, you know, he would take extremely long bathroom breaks. Um, and then one day he wandered off from the warehouse. He just went out for, a, I don't know, a long lunch or he went off to do something. And, and there, what happens is you get in your own head as, as a team, as a leader, as a boss, that you really want this person to work out. Well, maybe they're not really engaged because they, we haven't sent them to training yet. Mm. And they don't have, they're not doing what we promised them they'd be able to do. And as an outside objective observer, I can look and say, look, this guy's not focused enough just to learn the warehouse, to engage with his team, to, to help sweep the floor. You're going to invest 50 grand in this guy who just wanders away from the warehouse, comes back two and a half, three hours later without telling somebody he's leaving. You're going to invest that much money in somebody. Let's find somebody who is naturally GWC's this mm -hmm. position because yeah. they're not getting it. And we went around the room. We did a people analyzer. Minus, 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 minus. You know, GWC, no, no, no. Why are you investing that? Right. And it's because our emotions, our internal desire is we want this person to work out. We're cheering for them. Yeah, you want people to win. If you care about your people, you want them to win. And yeah, you can. You can be overly optimistic for sure. And I never met this person. I don't know what they look like, but just you need that outside objective voice to say, hey, yeah. slow down. What's going yeah. on here? Yeah. That's 50 grand that, um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty much uh, my entire, it's almost my entire engagement with them. So, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, one day. That's good. Yeah. So you do focus day and then 30 days later, you do vision building day one. And then 30 like, days, uh, vision building day 30 two. days later, we yeah. get these foundational tools, the accountability chart. We start building your rocks on focus day. What's your first set of rocks, your first quarterly goals yeah. that you want to accomplish. And, and let, and the last um, you go for rocks and then you teach it. We, we go over the meeting pulse, how to really, st how to start running L10s and what's your first scorecard. These are our accountability. This is our foundational tools. Now we can start building vision. Yeah. How we can dial in, where are we going? Yeah. So day two, vision building day one and two, we can start building that vision because we have the ability to actually act on it. Our, yeah. one, one of the favorite lines everybody has of this, you know, you can have a great vision, but if you don't have the tools to move traction on it, vision without traction, it's hallucination. Yeah. Everybody says it. It's a great quote. It's yeah. So those first um, ninety days, there's a lot of learning. You know, you're yeah. you're 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 doing some hard work to get the foundation to get the right. additional tools working. Then after that, right, it's every ninety days. Now we're on a quarterly pulse. Yeah. Every ninety days, we come together. We, we take a look at our rocks. How did we do? Did we accomplish the, th the most important things that we wanted to do over the next night, over the last 90? How did we do? I mean, we shoot for 80%. Yeah. Hopefully we did better. But yeah. we look back and then we take a look at our VTO, at our vision. Are we still aligned? Because oftentimes we're not. Oftentimes something tweaks. We have to change it. Yeah. What, are we gonna there. Yeah. what are we going to accomplish over the next 90? So yeah. we get in this pulse of every 90 days checking, how are we doing? Yeah. And then we have a, a then we have a one, a one year annual, a, I mean, a two day annual where we come together. Okay. We've been doing this on 90 days. What are we going to accomplish this next year? Yeah. What are the most important things? And I like that about, about EOS, because, you know, one of the things that happens in business, we get so overwhelmed with everything that's happening. We're trying to eat the elephant. And what we're doing is we're really dissecting into, hey, if we take three to seven bites of the elephant this year, yeah. it's going to be incredibly successful. Yeah, that's good. It's good. It <laughs> I love I love the process. I know for me, I, I start to lose focus after 90 days, which I think there's been studies about that, that that that's the case that people do tend to lose focus. And so mm -hmm. 
90 days is manageable, then you have a day to just really sit down and focus. And even myself as a solopreneur, I do the same thing. I yeah. joke, I joke and I say, well, time for a quarterly session with me, myself and I, <laughs> and yeah. I sit down and, you know, and I do the same things that I do with my clients. And, uh, but I come out of that, you know, I learn from it, especially the reflection part. I find there's so much learning there than, you know, setting, setting the next, uh, the rocks and goals for the next quarter. I have found myself now on evening walks, just, I used to, whether sometimes it's audible and listen to a book, but sometimes it's just take the AirPods out and you just go through, what are you doing? Where are you trying to go? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? How are you going to get there? And what have you learned along the way? Yeah. And just having that self-reflective time. Keith Cunningham used to talk, call it thinking time. You know, just have the time, set the time aside, grab a, you know, whether sit in a chair, I've got one right back there with uh, oh, my US bag and uh, from the session yesterday and sit down with the legal pad, ask yourself a question and just sit and think of the answer. The, the best way to come up with a good answer, a good solution is to come up with a hundred answers and pick the best one. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Awesome. So I know we're running out of time here. So if, if someone wants to learn more about you and what you do, how should they get in touch, Rick? Best way is, um, you know, whether email rick.benton at EOS Worldwide, R-I-C-K-B-E-N-T-O-N. Uh, phone number is always works. Just let's put it out there. It's public, uh, 248-867-9550. It's a Detroit number take the boy out of Detroit, but you can't take the Detroit out of the boy. Uh, <laughs> never changed it. And, and, you know, just online because whether I, well, I'm one that likes to travel, I'm happy to go wherever there are other, there are implementers in your local area and wherever you might be listening. Um, if you, if, if what I, anything I said resonates, I'd love to talk to you and um, see if sure. I'm a good fit as well. That's one thing that I love about EOS implementers and the EOS community is that that core value, back to core values. Help help first. Help yeah. first, right? So yeah. definitely reach out. So on behalf of our viewers, thank you for joining Absolutely. us, Rick, and thanks for sharing your passion. My and pleasure. If today's interview added value to you, please subscribe to this channel for future interviews with experts in the world of business. Mm -hmm.